Hello. So this is the example that, that continues uh, from the, the discussion we had on the whiteboard. Um, so I want to show you how to parameterize uh, a log linear model, um, how to initialize it with you know some arbitrary parameters, but then improve those parameters uh, using data. So I'm going to have a very simple three-dimensional feature function that counts the number of positive words, the number of animals, and the number of humans in a given tuple of tokens. Uh, my data set has two examples of you know, histories uh, followed by words. Uh, one example is cool dog followed by barking, and another example is little kid followed by screaming. Um, so I featureize both instances of you know, the history. Uh, so here you see my phi, uh, my feature vectors for cool dog and for, for little kid. So cool dog has, you know, uh, one positive word, one animal and no humans in it. Little kid has um, no positive word, uh, no animals and, uh, and has a kid. Perhaps one could argue that a kid is a positive word, but uh, I, I didn't do it in this case. Um, feature functions are, you know, up to the designer. Um, my tar target vocabulary, so the output vocabulary of the random variable W uh, is going to be very small here. I only know two possible responses, barking and screaming. And that's my simplified example. Um, each one of these will get a three-dimensional three weight vector. And to keep my example short, I'm actually not even going to use bias parameters in my model. So I'm initializing my parameters arbitrarily. Now you could use a random generator. I put them by hand, but I, I, I honestly didn't think much about them. I just picked numbers that were non-zero and around zero. Um, so you see that I have three... Why do I have three weights for each possible outcome of the output word? Because essentially a logistic CPD is a linear model per possible outcome. That linear model has to map from the feature space, which is three-dimensional, to a score and eventually a probability for each one of the outcomes. And that's why for each outcome, I'm going to have a three-dimensional weight vector. Now, I'm using Torch, and because I will be computing using Torch to compute derivatives for me, I need to let Torch know that uh, I'm doing so, that, that this is a parameter. So it's not an arbitrary type of vector, it happens to be a parameter, and then you know, it, it, we can obtain derivatives or parameters. Um, having these parameters in place and a feature function in place, I can predict probabilities for any one feature vector I'm given by using a linear transform, as this one, followed by a softmax. So this is what I implemented here. So if I have a feature vector and my collection of Ws, then I will stack them into a matrix. This will give me a matrix with all the parameter vectors for all possible outcomes of the word, the next word. And um, I'm going to matrix multiply the Ws and the phi's and the features. And see that uh, normally you would also add a bias vector, but in this example, I'm not modeling with biases. So this is going to be v-dimensional. Uh, for a single feature vector, this is going to be v-dimensional. And then if I apply the softmax, um, basically I'm going to get a v-dimensional vector of probability. So these are v-dimensional scores in the real in the v-dimensional real coordinate space, and this is a v-dimensional probability vector in the simplex v minus one. Now. With this little function in place, I've essentially prescribed a mechanism to parameterize a categorical distribution in a given context, no matter what context I'm given, provided that my context is something I can featureize in this d-dimensional space. And here is the full mechanism. So the feature function maps h, an arbitrary history, to a d-dimensional space, a vector of with d-coordinates that are numerical, the big W will map those D features to uh, V scalars, one score per um, outcome of the next word. Well, in, 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 in oh, actually, yeah, <laughs> I'll put a note here. Uh, note that in this collab, I did not use biases. So my, my model definition actually doesn't have plus b. I apologize. Okay. 
right. And um, finally, uh, because scores are in probabilities, I use the softmax transform to obtain a probability vector. And I can show you that this works. So for my QDOG feature vector, uh, I can project that feature vector to the space of probabilities for barking given cool dog and screaming given cool dog by simply running my forward model. And I obtain 49, 20, 0.4925 for barking and 0.5075 for screaming. And this is close to a uniform distribution because my model is close to uniform, uh, uh, randomly initialized. And see that uh, the probabilities of barking given little kid and screaming given little kid can be computed again by uh, my forward log linear model and I obtain 0 0.56 and 0.43. And again, this is close to uniform, a little less, but still. Of course, these probabilities aren't informed by data because my parameters weren't informed by data. Um, but we're going to get to the point where they're, we're going to improve these probabilities. One, of, one thing I want to show you is that other histories can also be pr pr uh, uh, mapped to probabilities for the corresponding condition of probability distribution. So given cat and baby, and cat and baby are mapped to 0, 1, 1. Remember, number of positive words, 0, number of animals, 1, number of uh, persons, 1, uh, humans. So this is the uh, feature vector associated with cat and baby, we can pass this feature vector through our log linear model and obtain a probability of barking given uh, cat and baby and screaming given cat and baby as represented by our feature function. And we would obtain, you know, something like 0 0.54, 0 0.45. So you can use the log linear model to uh, uh, to predict probabilities um, no matter the history, provided that you can uh, featureize the tuple. Um, now let's get back to the observed training data and let's use it to compute log likelihood of our current parameters. So using the current parameters, I obtained probabilities for cool dog, uh, sorry, for barking, given cool dog, and remember barking was the first coordinate, I chose to put it in the first position and screaming in the next position. So the zeroth probability in the output vector here. Uh, this is the probability of barking given cool dog. So the logarithm of the probability of barking given cool dog, that is the log likely this is the contribution of this example to the log likelihood function. And the probability of screaming, which is in coordinate one, uh, given little kid, uh, which I stored here, you see. So the logarithm of that is a contribution of the second training example towards the log likelihood of the parameter choice. And then if I add the two, that is the total log likelihood. Now I'm going to interact. I'm not going to use torch optimizers. You probably already know all about them. I'm just going to do it by hand for you to see. I'm going to use the grad function in the autograd package. And I'll ask for the gradients of the log likelihood expressed uh, with respect to the two parameter vectors I have, one for the weights of barking and one for the weights of screaming. And I get two partial derivatives here. And uh, Well, I actually should have, uh, I think I wanted to show you the partial derivatives and I, I, I showed you the wrong thing. I can do a quick restart and run all. Uh, it's short enough that this would take no time. There we go. So you can see the derivatives. The derivative for this parameter vector is, of course, a parameter vec uh, uh, of same dimensionality as a parameter vector. And the same is also true for screaming. And you see it's tweaking some parameters positively, some negatively, and here two parameters negatively and another parameter positively. And if we were to move the parameters towards the direction of our gradient, we would improve the probability of the observed data because this model actually happens to be one for which um, some convexity uh, guarantees are in place. And let's have a look at what happens. So before, we had the probability of, you know, um, barking given cool dog was 0.4925. If instead I use the tweaked parameter vector, so parameter vectors updated by their gradients, 
I changed that probability to 0.88. It's quite an improvement. And the same is true for the other one. Before, we had uh, the probability of screaming given a little kid was 43. And after updating both vectors along the, 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 the gradient directions we obtained, uh, we obtained a probability of 0.70. And, and I can also show you uh, the complete probability mass function here. So all parameters, all probabilities, and also here. so that you can see that the, the, the result remains a distribution that adds up to 1 for any one given history. So for Koo Dog, this adds up to 1. For Little Kid, this adds up to 1. The only difference is that before, these distributions were close to uniform, and after a gradient update, they are already preferring the observed next word for each one given history. Um, Sometimes it's meaningful to have a look at what's happening with the parameters. Um, well, when your models grow too large, this is not going to be possible, but for now we can do it, so maybe I can show you. What's happening is that, for example, to have barking, uh, uh, sorry, what's happening is that uh, barking, right, the score for barking, the updated parameters for barking, which will take part in predicting the score for barking, the score before softmaxes are applied, um, is basically bumping the importance of the first two features and demoting the third feature. So finding humans here, what was the third feature? Number of humans. Humans don't seem to improve the probability of barking, they seem to decrease the probability of barking, whereas being positive and being an animal seem to together increase the probability of barking. And um, probability of screaming kind of is demoted with being cool and with being an animal and, you know, upweighted with, uh, uh, with there being a human in the history. So a human in the history will push the probability of screaming up, whereas... Uh, positive things and animals in the history will decrease that probability. So all very fairly inter interpretable. That's it. I hope this helps. We're going to be making use of the logistics CPD and, uh, you know, soon enough we are going to um, generalize this thing even further and have a neural representation of a CPD. But then I see you and talk to you about it next time.